The average American throws away approximately 185 pounds of plastic per year. At first, that number seems shocking, but when you think about it, it is almost impossible to imagine a world without plastic. We use it to write, eat, brush our teeth, drink, travel, and almost every other activity that is done on a daily basis. So where is all this plastic going? Some of it goes to landfills, some of it is exported, and some of it is downcycled. But most of the plastic we throw away ends up in the ocean, where it pollutes the environment and causes deaths to thousands of animals. Unlike natural materials like wood or cotton, plastic is made up of polymers, large molecules that are unable to break down. Because of this, plastic is not able to biodegrade, because the microorganisms that usually break down plants and animals don't recognize it. Plastic is, however, able to photodegrade of sunlight, a process in which a material is broken down into smaller and smaller pieces by the sun. These tiny pieces become like confetti and are almost impossible to clean up. These small pieces of plastic eventually accumulate in gyres, which are large spirals of currents that attract waste. There are five major gyres, the North Atlantic, South Atlantic, North Pacific, South Pacific, and Indian Gyre. All of these gyres, which together make up 40% of the ocean, have plastic debris in them. The North Pacific Gyre is the largest, and is home to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It is a common misconception that the term garbage patch means that there is an island of garbage waste. Instead, the water there is like a plastic soup, with countless tiny pieces of garbage. The ratio of plastic to sea life in the garbage patch is 6 to 1. So how is all this plastic harming sea life? Well, over 270 different species are currently being affected by plastic debris in the ocean, and it has caused the death of over 1 million birds, 100,000 marine mammals, and countless fish. There are three major ways that plastic can affect marine life. Firstly, ingestion, when an organism swallows plastic. An accumulation of plastic inside an organism's body makes the animal think it is full, which can cause dehydration and lead to malnutrition or death. Fish in the North Pacific ingest 12,000 to 24,000 tons of plastic per year. Secondly, plastic pollution can also cause suffocation. When organisms try to swallow plastic, it sometimes can get caught in their throats, where it blocks airway passages or inhibits normal growth patterns. Thirdly, in the case of nets or fishing wire, Plastic can cause entanglement, meaning that animals can get trapped in the plastic. But the plastics these organisms are ingesting is not only hurting them, it is also hurting us too. Plastic is made from oil, gas, and toxic chemicals. When it photodegrades in the ocean, it releases these chemicals into the water. Additionally, plastic also acts as a sponge to attract other contaminants that are already in the ocean. The contaminants that end up on these plastic fragments are chemicals like BPA, which has been found to interfere with reproductive systems, cause hormone disruption, and can be associated with miscarriage, heart disease, and diabetes. When animals ingest this plastic waste, those contaminants enter their bloodstream and tissues. When larger fish eat the smaller organisms that take in these toxins, the chemicals are then added to their bloodstream. These toxins leach up the food chain to eventually end up on our dinner plates. We are essentially eating our own waste. So how does all this pollution get into the ocean? 20% comes from illegal dumping from boats, but most plastic pollution, 80%, comes from land-based sources like beach users, litterers, plastic manufacturers, or sewage. Any piece of plastic that is dumped on the ground can be carried by wind or rain to the ocean. An important step that many cities and countries have begun to take towards ending plastic pollution is banning the sale of plastic water bottles and plastic bags. Around 17 countries and 14 states have already banned or partially banned lightweight plastic bags. Passing laws banning these or other plastic items can make a major difference in the amount of plastic waste disposed of by community. So what can you do to help? It starts by making personal changes to your own life such as buying items with less plastic packaging, using containers and reusable bags, going to farmer's markets, 
and placing your waste in the right bins. If you want to get more involved, there are several organizations that hold organized beach cleanups every week, or you can do it alone. Either way, you are making a difference.